Hello. A long time ago, synthesizers and other electronic instruments, such as uh, drum machines, used various different means to communicate with one another. Roland had a few items, such as this, with DINSYNC for timing, but also, as with a lot of other companies, they used CV, which is control voltage, and gates, which is key on and key off. A few other little tricks like pitch bend modulation was possible, but they needed more patch cables and controlling voltages. EML and Buchler used 1.2 volts per octave. Yamaha and Korg used Hertz per octave, which was a quarter volt, then half a volt, one, two, four, eight, as it went up the scale. Way back in 1981, along came Dave Smith of Dave Smith Instruments and Sequential Circuits. And he sort of got the manufacturers together and they all shook hands and all became friends and they used Musical Instrument dig Digital Interface, which is MIDI. That's what we all use today. He gave it away for free so all the companies could make instruments so Roland could plug into Core, could plug into Yamaha. But thanks to MIDI now, things tend to get along just fine without too many problems. However, many people still own vintage equipment that has no MIDI and drum machines that uses DINSYNC. You know, how do we keep this all in perfect timing? Well, several companies made different machines, such as Kenton and other people, that can turn MIDI into CV and gates. Ronan had the SBX80 and then the bigger SBX1000, but now they've come out with this, the SBX1, which includes USB as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't support the hertz per volt system which Korg and Yamaha use, but hopefully with a, an update in the future they might be able to support that. It can be used as a master clock to synchronise modular gear and you can use the shuffle to add swing to your 808s, for example. So, I want to see if this can be used with the gear I've got here on the table. So the TB3, I want to use that as a sequencer with the MIDI out. So the MIDI out to go into the sync box and turn this into CV and gate to control the spectrum synthesizer. And at the same time, the DIN, the DIN sync to try and get the drum machine in time as well. And hopefully it should do all that. And then when we've done all that, I'm going to take it apart and see just how Roland actually makes this thing tick. So, let's get started. I've got the SBX1 now wired up to the Spectrum Synthesizer with the CV and gate and the DIN output, or the DIN sync if you wish, into the Roland TR606 and I'm using the TB3 as a sequencer to control the notes on the synthesizer and also the timing to control the timing of the drum machine and that is selected by the clock source here if you have it set on MIDI then it's the MIDI coming from the TB3 which is going to control the timing so let's see if it keeps timing this is not fantastically musical it's just a demonstration to see if all this talks to each other correctly so here goes sounds good a little bit out of tune. It's old. Well, basically, the drums are in time with the notes, and uh, that's exactly what this thing is for, and it's doing it reasonably well. So. I want to open this up now and have a look inside there and see exactly what makes this thing tick. So, screwdriver time. The SBX1, unlike the other era products, is all metal boxed. So, yeah, there's quite a bit of hefty weight in there. And as you can see, there's all the little buttons on the top and that wonderful green that they're using for all their era products. And this is what you get on the back. And you have all the parameters and values on the bottom here. So, fortunately, it's a posi drive. So, let's get this thing open.
There we go. Not a lot in there. All the magic must be on the other side of the board. Here's the input and output board here. And there must be some sort of uh, processor and electronics on the underside of this board. So I'll get this board lifted up and we'll have a look underneath there. As with most modern day equipment, there just doesn't seem to be a heck of a lot to look at anymore. But here we go. There's an ARM Cortex processor there. That's a 32-bit processor. It's got about half a mega flash memory, 64K of SRAM. There's three analog to digital converters on there and two digital to analog converters. Lots of communication interfaces, timers, and there'll be onboard USB 2 as well. So that'll be doing most of the legwork for the entire board. Other than that, there's some uh, little rail-to-rail -rail output dual operational amplifiers here, JRC, which is Japan Radio Corporation. Now, I guess these are just supplying the voltages for the CVs and gates. There's some hex inverters and there's some uh, step-down DC-DC converters there. And I've just noticed this actual button here is offset, so that hasn't been placed properly by the machine. But it, it operates, so what's the problem? Uh, what you sort of can't appreciate is there are hundreds of components on here. There's tiny resistors, capacitors, transistors, but they're so tiny you don't really see them all. But a component count runs into quite a few hundred components on this board. They're just so small you don't really notice them. And on the back, uh, where the little mini jacks are, they look like they've been hand soldered in with plenty of solder so they can take lots of abuse over time. Hopefully we'll see. But other than that, that's the SBX-1. And uh, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up because that helps me to make more videos. And uh, thank you very much for watching again. All the best.